This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasts with the perfect pepperoni pizza, SliceOnBroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash AwesomeCast. Hey guys, it's the Awesome Cast, episode 295. Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitters from the Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh, PA. Lovely, lovely Pittsburgh, PA. Um, and we're ready to get geeky, talk tech, and with a whole bunch of people here. Uh, first of all, from Studio C, it is John Chichilla. How's it going? Hey. How's it how's it being back in Studio A? It, it's wonderful. Well, we, well, we were... I mean, we were all here last week. It's just the internet wasn't, um, so we could still record. And and I'm not going to tell you why we didn't have internet. I'm not going to tell you that because that's. I'm just going to continue to guess. I love. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. We'll let you have one guess a week until you get it. Why do you think? <laughs> why do you think we didn't have internet last week? I think you, you the the Ethernet cable was was unplugged from the router to the all the other routers that is not the issue see you next week also with us we got a lot of people in studio partaking that slice on broadway pizza by the way first of all katie yeah, pizza desk exactly <laughs> that's how we keep it warm throughout the night um katie dude is at k dutters on the twitter and she is a uh, uh the, the does awesome stuff over scare house actually you have a new video yeah. series yes. i guess going on to scare house right now what podcasting wasn't enough Nope, nope, nope. Uh, no, uh, Thursdays are now a behind the scenes uh, video, a little clip of video, what we're doing. Um, kind of this week's going to be more like on the design si- side of things, people working. Last week was just kind of me yelling about poop and crap in a big room. <laughs> <laughs> it was. It did just boil down to that. Yes. Yeah, I mean, yes. And me being told I was watching too much wrestling. <laughs> but yeah this this week will be different every week will be different that's awesome we're planning on doing the series all throughout the season too so yeah, that's awesome and you see if you're on video you see there's a new face new, a new face in studio although Hi. not a stranger to awesomecast.net we've had him mm-hmm. on before we talked to him one of his co-workers a while ago drew lippold of peacemaker.com um for those that maybe don't know what is peacemaker so uh, Peacemaker is a local Pittsburgh startup that is bringing 3D printing into the retail and entertainment space. And so what we allow our users to do is walk up to one of our kiosks and actually go in, select an item, and customize it however they want with color, text, uh, various emojis, different parts. And then that part prints for you wherever you are at. So we have a whole kiosk system with a ton of printers and... You if, say you're at the zoo, you walk up again, you go through a system and then uh, go through the zoo and come back, pick up your piece later. And we're also um, doing metal printing. So we're partnering mm-hmm. with a local company. Uh, I can't say what the company is, but we will offer uh, metal printing here in the next few months. That's awesome. That's awesome. And, and you, you have some you have some 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 samples with us. Yeah. You so, can show off on video here. Yeah. So these are all. Um, stuff that i've done so here's like a spongebob action nice. figure that you can make uh and that's and that's um it looks like it's kind of segmented so what you, you would like print out each piece and they kind of they kind of clip together yeah so i i brought him because he's uh pretty big so you can really see the detail mm-hmm. uh normal size is about the size of this alpha mm-hmm. um and again like it prints on separate pieces and then you put them together um but then we also have like really 3d stuff like fuego the Ooh. dragon uh, and his real size is right here, uh-huh. and then you can see, you That's can cute. yeah, <laughs> that he's uh that you can actually customize right here on his little base plate. Mm-hmm. Um, I can one of our licenses, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, as well. And I'm interested. <laughs> <laughs> so we have uh, our little turtle here, and he his tongue will actually like stick out. And so that's awesome like that's awesome yeah. by the way proof proof i have a ninja turtles com- uh, coloring book right here in case i'm <laughs> stuck in the studio and need to need to unwind a little bit so yeah yeah right up my alley yeah we're very excited about all the licenses we that's have great and i mean our licensors too like they're really excited because this is an avenue to where they can go 
and trust someone to bring their products to 3D printing instead of some, you know, random person just making a model and like really not getting the sense of that brand correct. Right, right. And, and, and it's also nice because they're not, you know, making a ton of these in China and shipping them over and hoping they sell a bunch of them. Like they're very much on demand, you know, ready to go, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so, I mean, if you ever see our system, we have, our printers have actually like seven spools of filament, which is another point too. Everything's safety certified at Peacemaker because we are dealing with children normally. Of course. Of course. So we have um, non-toxic ABS plastic that we're using. So that was sent over uh, for testing. And then we go through a third party um, safety uh, company that tests all of our pieces. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. I mean, um, and, and, and I know, you know, I've heard, um, on your social media, you guys have, and actually I think you guys connected at one of the places you guys have, have some really cool partnerships with the Pittsburgh zoo, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you know, we were actually, it was just a random encounter. We were at the <laughs> zoo and I get a text from Kitty <laughs> like, Hey, Hey, peacemaker wants to come on. I'm like, we've talked to what's, what's what, 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 okay. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's definitely a little different. I mean, the last time I was on the show, I was an intern. Mm -hmm. And and uh, we were out at Alpha Lab Gear. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we're out of Alpha Lab Gear now. Mm -hmm. uh, we have our own office. We share it with a company called Soul Power. Uh, mm -hmm. Great company. Uh, visit their website because they did just re uh, launch their product for pre-release. And there, if I recall, they are kind of generating electricity by... Um, like through your shoes, basically. Yes, You're like, yes. like for like charging phones and stuff, right? Right. So yeah. you have with their system, and I can't give you like the full detail because they no, know just, it best. Just a quickie. <laughs> but um, yeah, so basically as you walk, they have a generator uh, in their shoe that generates electricity and then it stores it to a battery pack, which then charges your phone. Mm -hmm. So again, a big shout out to them. They are like right in the middle of their pre-orders. So... That's awesome. We're getting mm -hmm. some questions from the chat room. Our buddy Alex Carr is out in California. He's asking if uh, if you guys ship to Southern California, <laughs> but 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 it's not a. I mean, it's on demand in location, basically. Though it's more that you have a kiosk somewhere and it's ready to go, right? Yes, that is exactly what it is. So unfortunately, mm -hmm. we do not have shipping, and where we don't have a website right now, there's just right, some logistics right. that we have to work out. But yeah, so we will be at the Pittsburgh Zoo again. Mm -hmm. uh, weather permitted for April 30th. Okay. And I, uh, the weekend of wait, April 30th. Awesome. And awesome. then we have a ton of other stuff that I can't announce yet. Yeah. <laughs> of course. Of Vince course. Ma oh, the, other, the other cool stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You'll let us know. Yeah. yeah just, we, we, we will. Let us know. We'll share it with everybody. <laughs> you know, just, just, just get, give us a heads up. Yeah. yeah. Whatever. Um, hey, no, this is really cool. Because, I mean, I've been to, um, um, like, FAO Schwartz, right? And they always have these custom... I want to say quotes, customizable things mm -hmm. in there. Like there's a friend of ours paid the thing for the customizable Hot Wheels car. When you, all you know is they just kind of have un, every configuration in the back and oh. they print out a little nameplate thing. Like they print out, you know, versus versus something like these things are actually like, like one made on the spot. It's not a stock of them in the back that they spit out of this little thing. And, uh, and, and what, what's yeah. that? What do you so got there? You were just saying about Hot Wheels. We actually have a license <laughs> with Ford too. Oh, awesome. wow. And so we have our F-150s and we have our Mustang GTs that right. you can print out and we have different configurations and, too. And now, I mean, obviously, you know, we're, you know, the, 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 where the technology is, these are like very one color plastic kind of objects, right? Right. I mean, we are working towards multicolor, but for right now, yeah, it's mono. Right. And, 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 and I mean, we're, we're, we talk about news, uh, you know, every other week there's some other 3d printing, um, breakthrough. I, I know even Alpha Lab gear, I know sitting there at demo day, I'm hearing about like how they're using 3d printing with, with, with metals that I've never heard of before. Right. Yeah. And so, I mean, this, this is, this is something that you guys, um, this is going to trickle down and you guys are going to be at the, I imagine the forefront of it because you're already kind of balling up into a nice kiosk. Right. So there, there, there's, yeah, there's, I mean, we were really successful. So we had a pilot at the Indianapolis Children's Museum mm -hmm. and we were doing about 100 prints a day. Wow. So, yeah, awesome. that uh, that was a great, great pilot. And we had a lot of fun with that one. Mm -hmm. And great little great little, you know, it's more than just pressing a penny. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. I think it's awesome. That's great. So 
Um, awesome. So we'll check on that. I know you got um, you got a couple of 3D things and, and, and definitely want to talk to you guys about that here as we go through the show. Um, but you guys can check out this and all the other shows and interviews and check out interview we had with these guys at peacemaker back in the day back, a yeah. young young drew <laughs> hanging out with us at alpha lab gear all those years ago what, like two years ago maybe yeah about two years <laughs> so yeah like yeah um and all that kind of stuff at awesomecast.net you subscribe to this in the awesome chat as well um on itunes uh google play we'll talk about that a little bit as well uh, for podcasts, you can uh, check us out every Tuesday. We get going around about 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time and uh, uh, get that stream rolling, get the chat room going. I get texts from uh, Wheels to ask if we're actually having a podcast this week. You know, things like that. Live at SorgatronMedia.com every Tuesday, 6 per- 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time. And also check us out on uh, RiversEdgePGH.com, our good friends over there. Uh, we're on Thursday mornings, 8 a.m. after Funny Mummy. Uh, funny money not mm-hmm. funny funny mummy but that also <laughs> would be a very show. interesting watch that. podcast <laughs> yes exactly so we may we, we may have something to pitch to you over there brian um <laughs> live from egypt <laughs> live, live from egypt <laughs> funny there was a team i'm not gonna get to there. there was people i was around people from egypt this past weekend actually <laughs> i'm glad those th- those those jokes didn't enter my mind but anyways uh big shout outs to our friends on patreon supporting the show our executive producers have been with us for a good while supporting the show at the five dollar level um thistle c business development our friends at thistle c on twitter up in cranberry township and mike fedor show michael fedor show uh, Mike Fedor show on Twitter. By the way, today's his birthday. So a happy oh. Patreon birthday to you. We're going to do you a favor and not sing. Trust me. We're going to do you a favor with that yeah. one. <laughs> yep. No, thank you so much uh, for uh, for supporting the show. Um, all the guys helping make the show. And we've been actually applying that money to some very interesting things that have been helping to to grow the show uh, a bit. So thank you so much. I haven't much seen a that. dime, so I don't know where it's at. It's not paying Katie. It's <laughs> 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 it's not it's not one of the growth opportunities unfortunately <laughs> darn it um no no we're here because we enjoy it and we've done it for a while before there was anybody doing that kind of thing so let's get into your awesome things of the week uh well hey you know let's roll back to you drew um let's talk a little bit about 3d printing since we're kind of cool. on that vibe right now you had you had a pretty cool awesome thing of the week what's going on here yeah so 3d uh just issued an article and the title is two-year-old had for, 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 forgive me if I botch your name, but uh, Maya, uh, to become the world's first patient to receive functional 3D printed ear. Oh, wow. Yeah, so this one is really cool. Um, so basically, the Queensland uh, put, University... Hold on, hold on. I'm oh. sorry. I have to point out here, just so, because uh, our friend Frank Mergy from the Pittsburgh Podcast Network also prints out notes for the show. And, <laughs> and, and I just want to point out that he's that you're in good company. Because you did cool. print out the article yep. to bring with you. <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> so I'm sorry. Go, go, go oh, ahead. That's fine. So, so, anyways, uh, in uh, Queensland University of Technology in Australia, um, they are about to print out a prosthetic ear for Mia Van Mulligan. Uh, she was born with a disease called microtia, uh, and so basically, uh, the standard 3D printing procedure for implants ears. Uh, within the next two to three years, they can see this happening. And this is really big for her, especially when she uh, starts to realize uh, that she doesn't have a ear. Because with this disease, like you're either born with a partial ear or you're born without an ear at all. And so her, I believe it's her left ear. Um, she like can't hear anything and she actually doesn't have anything there. So what they, they want this to lead into, though is for them to, in two to three years, once they get this prosthetic on her, to actually use her own cells and grow an ear for her to replace the prosthetic. Hmm. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, if I'm understanding the disease, like, is the functional internals of an ear still there, or is this mostly a cosmetic thing? Uh, I, I believe it, it's different with everyone, but I believe in her situation, like, it's just not there. Okay, so like there's the, the eardrum and everything is mm-hmm. actually in her, but but just that that the functional shape of an ear just never developed a, a, right. a, a, on that side of her head. Right. So so wow, that so that actually would pretty much bring her up to par with something like that, right? Yeah, and the crazy thing is that 
there's once they get this technology down, a new ear will cost you about two hundred dollars. So, huh. yeah, like huh. a, a real life ear, two hundred dollars, which is cheaper than most glasses. So, <laughs> That's insane. yeah, yes, yes. Wow. I, and, and there are other like kind of tissue printing uh, uh, methods that they are they are already getting into right right, right. about like not replacement like parts organs tissues you know things like that so it, it, it definitely kind of aligns with uh with that that uh you know that process and what's developing there right so when am i getting a human ear out of the kiosk can you give me just a <laughs> ballpark <laughs> projection Maybe that's, that's our big announcement oh man just Is body that, parts of the kiosk if that's one of your announcements <laughs> that you can't announce just blink twice <laughs> Well, I mean, that's I can see that's some how I, big implications there, that's but how, that's how NDAs work, I don't know work, about right? safety. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, um, awesome. So uh, that's awesome. And I've seen like um, I, I've spent some time at the uh, the one. Uh, oh, I can't remember the name. The one the one deaf school in, in town here where they're dealing with students to have like cochlear implants. Yeah. You know? Like like mm-hmm. like that is fascinating technology what they're able to do with that. Like there's actually like, like these, these kids have like a microchip implanted in their head basically. Yeah. You know, I think it's the Western PA uh, school for the deaf. I think, I think yeah. so. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, DePaul. Yes. Actually DePaul. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, that's right. Um, but we did a story with them way back on, uh, on sung back in the day. There, uh, there are some earbuds out there. I believe they're called the, the here earbuds. Mm-hmm. And they're in prototype phase right now, but essentially they're trying to improve the quality of hearing uh, for deaf and the hard of hearing. Oh wow! Mm-hmm. Um, Alex is asking when to follow up question. When? How can we get you guys out here in California? Can he start an Indiegogo? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, right now we're focusing on the East Coast, and we'll eventually make our way uh, out to Cali in the West Coast. Uh, I mean, it's really just trying to get the right partners mm-hmm. into the right venues. Um, so he should just keep writing your, your your name on comment cards wherever he goes, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. basically? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so every suggestion box, hit them up. So... <laughs> Awesome. All right, uh, Katie, what is your awesome thing of the week? My awesome thing is Google Play finally has our podcast. What? I know. We submitted them. I don't know how long ago. Like October? Yeah. It's It's been forever, and finally it's the day. And if you have gone, and I, I would like to compare notes on uh, who has the ugliest link for their <laughs> podcast. <laughs> Because thank, it, th- thank you, Twitter, for shortening, by the way. Oh, my gosh. They're ridiculous. And it, and I thought it was just me, and I thought it was just somebody. I, but it's like you, Doug, you know, Awesome Cast, uh, mm-hmm. Scarehouse. It's all these hideous long <laughs> links. And I'm like, what is this URL? I can't, you know, it's like the Scarehouse pod. It's like all this blah, blah, blah. That is the Scarehouse podcast, one of America's blah, 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 blah best haunted houses. Like, it, it, it's amazing. So, like, I feel like they just push this out to push it out. Mm-hmm. And then there's going to be some cleanup later. But um, it sounds like the Android users are having some problems. Chill what? Out. It's so I yeah I I fired up. I I tried searching in Google Play. Then I'm like, well, maybe it's in the music app. So I went to the music app. I mean, I can't figure out how to find the actual podcasts. And okay. I search Awesome Cast. I search Pod. Like I can't figure it out. So- Am I? Am I that dumb? No, no. So here's here's my problem. So all because of the way I have Google Music set up, it like pulls everything out of iTunes for me. So all my podcasts were already there because they're all getting downloaded and then sucked back up into Google Music. <laughs> <laughs> so so basically what you need to do, which I know that's the death knell of this, but so you need to search for your podcast and you're probably gonna get a bunch of like music that comes up. For me, like these are all like actual me like my stuff and stuff right you actually have to go all the way to the bottom of the page and you'll see podcasts and you'll see you'll see stuff pop up there so you'll like for i i just typed in awesome cast just in the general search at music.google.com i go all the way to the bottom and you do see awesome cast awesome chat and the walking dead enthusiast podcast apparently I guess so. Okay. Um, hmm. So I, and again the same thing with wrestling mayhem show um, you do have to type you know, basically it directly and then go to the bottom of whatever page 
and 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 that will be the listing. And it'll say they're just a little header that says podcast. There's not really like there's the top charts and your podcast, but then like you go to the search and it's general it's general music search. Mm-hmm. So there's Ooh. not a I want to just search podcast kind of situation. I'm going to subscribe to Nerdist while I'm here. Um, so, so how do I do this from a, an actual device? No. Yeah, it's 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 so <laughs> weird. Like it, the the thing is so weird is uh, that Google in their email when they send it out to you to say that your podcast podcast is now listed. They give you a way, there's a whole paragraph, if you'd like to include Google Play Music links in your marketing materials or mention Google Play Music in your podcast, here are some suggestions that will help point your listeners in the right direction. Quote, listen on Google Play Music. Quote, discover us on Google Play Music. Quote, stream us on, stream our podcast on Google Play Music and quote, now available on Google Play Music. We recommend avoiding the word download or referring to only Google Play in order to prevent confusion between the Google Play Store and Google Play Music app. And website. <laughs> but I went to the Google Play Music app. <laughs> That's, That's my point. Yeah. So I launched Play Music. And I go into the search and I type Awesome Cast. I think. And I get Ariana it? Grande. <laughs> you know. Maybe she thinks we're awesome. I don't well, there you go. I don't know if the app. I, I, I don't know anybody that's tried it on Android yet. Last I knew, it's online on the site, and the apps have not been updated. I could be wrong. I think generally... Because everyone goes to their computer to listen to a podcast. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. You know? But this this is always the way with, with Google is... Um, Google Plus was the same way. Like, hey, you're going to do this today. Like, great. Uh, look for it in the app in about a week or two on iTunes and Android. You know? I mean, that's just... You know, probably Android first, sometimes iPhone first. Depends on what we feel like today. Um, that's how Google Apps work. And, uh, I mean, I think it's one of those, like, oh, let's get it on the site. We're good to go. You guys are going to advertise it and point people to it anyways. They're going to subscribe subscribe to your thing and then forget about it whenever it starts working on their app. And then your podcast will magically show up again. So I'm kind of curious. So if you, you know, we've been rolling out these videos Um from the 10 year anniversary for wrestling mayhem show. And how many of those were like, Oh, I went to iTunes and typed in wrestling podcasts like eight years ago. And you were one of the top ones, you know, hard to find us now, you know, or I went to Stitcher and looked up wrestling podcasts four years ago. And there you were. And I started listening and Holy crap, you're in my backyard, you know? So I'm wondering, you know, if you, if, if you have a podcast, you know, get on the front door. If you haven't already signed up, get it on now. Because if you type wrestling podcast now, you know, I want to be, I'm kind of curious now what would come up, um, you know, or Pittsburgh podcast or haunted house podcast or whatever, or drinking podcast, our, our friends, uh, should I drink that are on there as well. Um, and also if you have a podcast you follow and you know that they're looking to be on um, Google, Google play. I, I, I would, I would, I would really, really, um, suggest that you go subscribe to them. Hey, here's fun. A uh, wrestling podcast does not come up with wrestling mayhem show. Hmm. So I need to work on SEO for my podcast now yeah. a little bit more, I guess. Um, I haven't heard of, I've honestly, I don't think I've heard of any of them hey, listed. If you put Pittsburgh podcast, you got Pittsburgh podcast network, the pirates breakdown scare house. Oh, Paradox. there you go. And Memorial <laughs> Park Church. That's so nice. <laughs> right, right. So uh, we'll be we'll be looking. Oh, there's at... awesome chat. There's awesome chat. Nice. Yeah, awesome chat You're made awesome that. Cast. Yep, sorry. Wow. Just you. Well, we know who you care about most. Wow, the top three. The top three is Pittsburgh Podcast, Pirates Breakdown, and Scarehouse. Good What's job. Up? Thank you. Good job. <laughs> you 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 Google music did it right. Apparently. Apparently. <laughs> because it was like, enter as many words. I was like, okay, cool. <laughs> Our friends, Jim Cren. Epicast is in here. Oh, that's good. Good to see. Um, so, yeah, definitely. Uh, I, I, I would I recommend, like, if you're like, kind of looking at this and think you might try this out when the apps get updated and everything, like, just just do your, do your favorite podcast a favor and go look them up and subscribe. And you might have to type them directly in or whatnot. <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah. Yeah, Ch- Chilla. What do you what are you putting in the chat room right now? Is that <laughs> so, so? I 
so I went to Google Play Music and I searched for Awesome Cast and then I opened it up and I clicked the share. Mm-hmm. And it's actually a much shorter URL than you oh, would think. That is kind of nice. Ooh. That is, is kind of nice. Ooh, it's, it's not like five miles long. No, it isn't. It, it's uh, play.google.com slash music slash m slash question mark T equals awesome cast. <laughs> that should be the title of the show. Question mark T equals awesome cast. <laughs> That's all I mean. No, 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 no. Um, but hey, you know, I always say <laughs> that is hilarious. <laughs> What? Not that we, I was looking at the shortened one, which is so much better than the. <laughs> than well, it's not, it's not like a. I mean, I mean, these people do YouTube, right? It's like they, they. It's not like they don't know how to shorten a URL. I know. Even like, I go to Google. It's g o o dot g l. <laughs> <laughs> you figure this out, guys. Hey, I had no problem finding the show on iTunes. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, that's. Yeah. Yeah. But either way. No. Like this is there's really not been a default way for you to find a podcast on Android. Yeah. Hmm. Like this is the iTunes of Android and that opening up. I, I want to see what happens to our numbers as this rolls out over the next because, you know, again, we're like, hey, we're on iTunes. Like, great. That's like half your audience. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I mean? That, that have right. these devices, um, you know, versus it was, you know, versus the how hard it was 10 years ago when we started this damn thing. Uh, but, uh, no, I think this is generally a good thing. Um, and I want to see, I want to see Google just, just eat iTunes lunch here and just make a better experience. No, it's not right now, mm-hmm. but what is when it starts, especially with Google, <laughs> you know, yeah. how long did it take for inbox to become like ultimately usable? Mm-hmm. Right. There, there's a lot of stuff there. So looking forward to it. All righty. Let's go to Chilla. What's your awesome thing of the week, sir? So uh, everyone needs a little armor for their device. Some of us more and than others. I, I, so I actually had a bit, and this is actually the second time this has occurred. So I'm just going to caveat the story with this. this is the second time you would think I would have learned the first. But so I was in a hurry and my laptop bag is a backpack that zips from the side oh no Mm. so if you forget to zip it your laptop it's not like a top load right yeah where you forget to zip it throw it on your back gravity and the fact that things don't fly upwards um protect your laptop from from hitting the ground um so i actually uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with Pittsburgh, I work in the UPMC building, um, which is the tallest building in Pittsburgh downtown. Um, I made it actually from my desk down the elevator, down the escalator, and about four blocks from the building before my laptop. All I heard was oh. splash, uh. slide. Um before my laptop slid out of the side of the backpack, hit the ground, and then slid down a hill by about four feet, um, maybe five. Luckily, it didn't slide into oncoming traffic. It merely <laughs> hit the sidewalk, and then all you heard was me saying, son of a, because I was already late for a meeting, and that's what put me into this whole flurry of frustration and sprinting across town. So that being said... Um, the laptop, uh, no damage done, um, in pure, perfect working condition. Nice. Good. Um, so if you bring up the picture, um, of the in case that I used to have, <laughs> um, I actually had to take this off the device cause it could kind of no longer actually maintain the, the snap on product that it is. Um, but in case what it is, is it's a plastic case. And if you if you look at the picture that I uh, that I have there, it actually has there's a huge crack in the upper right hand corner. Um, all of the pieces that kind of fold down around the bezel of the laptop, and you're going to want to scroll over there to the side. See that big crack? Yeah, uh, like under can... the, the right side. Yeah. Um, all the corners you can see in the upper left hand corner, the plastic's kind of lifted up, and the whole pretty much the whole piece is cracked all the way around. Um, the bottom piece as well, any of the pieces that's, that helped hold it onto the laptop have, have snapped off. Um, so, 
so all in all, I have to say it was the best $50 investment to put yeah. onto a yeah. $2,500 laptop. <laughs> Definitely. Um, and and it, it, it's just, I, I actually, the biggest loss out of this to me is the nice vinyl Stark Industries and Jarvis is my co-pilot stickers that I <laughs> lost because mm-hmm. um, those can't be transitioned. Um, so, but luckily enough for me, um, the Steel City con was this weekend so i was able to replace with the iron man and jarvis is my co-pilot oh, nice. yeah. um, new stickers with a new black um Ooh. in case but that being said um i would highly highly recommend to anyone that has a a device that they hold near and dear to them that they use day in and day out i use this every day and twice on Sundays. So this is my lifeline. I wouldn't even want to have to turn this into Apple to do like a screen repair or anything mm-hmm. along those lines. Um, so if, if you, if you use equipment, like I use equipment, um, I'm not saying drop your equipment cause that's a bad idea. Really. <laughs> be, be safe, zip up. Um, but, <laughs> but if it, just in case, uh, the, the armor definitely comes in handy. So, so check out the in case hard shell. There's there's other devices too. I know Tech Twenty One makes it makes a good product, um, and I actually have some bags from Brett Haven that the the bag can take a two floor two story drop and protect the laptop that's inside. Oh wow! Um, but but this highly highly recommend the in case case. Yeah, I mean, as a someone who has studied product design, um, I would say the backpack is definitely a fall for that. Uh, side loading zippers, never a good idea. Uh, but no, definitely for the in case, it did what it was supposed to do, which I assume would be almost like a motorcycle helmet to where when you crash in a motorcycle helmet, its main job is to fracture and take the break. And so, uh, yeah, kudos to in case for doing that. Uh, I had a, uh, in case, well, a system chisel for my iPhone 5S. And uh, that was the best case that I've ever had. And I wish they made it for the six. It was. Yeah. Awesome. I, I, I just asked to put it on our requisition list for for our stuff here. Um, because. <laughs> Me too. Hey, mm-hmm. <laughs> hey, I'm the one walking around with a life proof case because of what happened last time. And very good, by the way. It should I've be got my, one too. There you go. There you go. <laughs> I mean, you know, I normally have mine. But. And, and by the way, I I, I want to point out uh, <laughs> on that end, um, I noticed how much dirt collected around the. Um, I don't know how much you can see right now, but the the, the dust on the on the camera hole mm-hmm. was just mm-hmm. just piled in there. Like I went to take a selfie when I was going around Nashville yesterday. I'm like, why is this so blurry? Oh, all the dirt's in there. Um, so really good since I was definitely definitely in the elements. Uh, over the weekend, uh, filming very close to Baja <laughs> cars in 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 the woods and the dirt and everything. You, so. you want a life hack? Want a good way to clean that? Huh. Baking soda and vinegar. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, it it dissolved Ooh. all that crud because uh, like I don't want to on the bottom because I don't want to take it off. Yeah. You know, and I, I mean, well, it's fine. It's waterproof. You can do it because <laughs> what happens is right. in that bottom, so the mic, it's it gets all the dirt in there that you can't get out. Right. And um, so it starts messing with how you're... Oh, I see. So that, that yeah. was an easy way for it to soak out. Okay. Yeah. They say you can just blow it out, but I, I've tried with a can oh, of air. It's just like a Nintendo cartridge, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I feel like when, when you get stuff wedged in there, I feel like suction's your best your best bet. Yeah, but I feel like you're going to pull like the innards of the phone out through it, too, like and, and knock something loose. What like, kind of suction I mean, are you using? Yeah. I, what? <laughs> <laughs> <was a> straw. <laughs> I mean, what about? Um, I don't want to suck in the dirt. <laughs> <laughs> or uh, the, the dirt computer all dusters. Of stuck in your phone, you're gonna be sucking it all in. Mm. Yeah, computer dusters. That's right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know. Um, I mean, there might be an attachment on the Dyson or something that sounds like something they would have. There's an app for it. <laughs> hey Dyson, get on this. <laughs> collect around the edges of the screen and everything. Collect that little bit because it has that little screen collector that. A screen protector that's like like kind of shaped to the shape of this. Mm-hmm. So um, my problem with this, like you know how you do the notification flip up, um, half the time I can't get it to work because you don't have the clearance 
you know, because mm-hmm. yeah. of, of the lip there. Um, small price to pay as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> I mean, my biggest problem with mine would probably be uh, my phone will overheat in the case. And so sometimes I have to take it out. Ooh. Yeah. I mean, if you look at this version of the case, it doesn't really have really good ventilation. No. Mm-hmm. Um, other than that, though, I've already broken one of these through just normal wear and tear. Uh, but the cool thing was, is I got a free one. So I just went on to life case. And if your life case is ever damaged or broken, uh, from normal wear and tear, they'll just send you a new one for free. Oh. And you even get to pick I, I a new one. I want to know exactly what normal wear and tear is to break a life case. Because, I mean, I think, sort of, you've crowd surfed and done all kinds of crazy things. No, 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 no. It, Katie did that. Yeah. yeah. Katie, yeah. Katie I'd did say that. The pink, the first case, uh, <laughs> life proof case, it actually did die uh, because the just. The, the more the waterproofing of it died versus the actual mm-hmm. case. Well, yeah, apart. but you kept like like putting it in my drink at Eaton Park no, that, whenever that should, we were just out. I mean, I mean, I just feel like you know, was it the Fago? Would the Fago eat away at it? Maybe? No, it's it's just the the seals. Yeah, I mean these seals like they they wear away. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. the actual uh part that goes over the audio jack mm-hmm. that broke off of my original one, and then mm-hmm. this part was coming off too. Mm-hmm. Right. But yeah, it was mainly like right in here. Uh, yeah. I got to the point where my volume buttons actually went off too. Mm-hmm. Wow. And then so, the, the button down there, and yeah. there was nothing on it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so you have like this little knob. And then to get it off too, you actually need a key or a coin to flip it. Mm-hmm. And so that kind of is counter. Uh, yeah, and that's why I don't want to like take it off because I figure mm-hmm. I, I don't know if I'll get as good a seal to it. Because right. the, the O-ring in there pops off. And event, you know, yeah, too many it's times so hard it stretches to get in, off. back yeah. in too. So, I mean, I've had, uh, yeah, my old case, a lot of problems. I mean, this one isn't as bad. Now mm-hmm. Now that I'm running Bluetooth on everything, you know, mm-hmm. I, my audio jack is still in, so that's good. <laughs> you have, I just have my the um, the adapter, the screw-in adapter, just permanently attached to my headphones. So, <laughs> yeah, we're, we're good to go. Mm-hmm. We're good to go. Um, all right. Um, oh, it's my turn. Oh, hi. <laughs> what was, what was right. my awesome thing? Holy crap, we're getting into this one. Yeah. Um, so uh, my this, this is actually um, I, I actually discovered this a, a couple weeks ago, but Alex uh, Alex Carth brought this up, and uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna steal it for my awesome thing, but <laughs> but he's the one that brought it up. Um, so WWE, there was a picture like maybe last summer where like Stephanie McMahon and Triple H were trying like VR helmets. Like it was a very odd like I wonder what they're gonna do with that kind of thing, right? And and I recalled, um, you know, we we're watching WrestleMania a couple weeks ago, and a uh, friend of friend of Wrestling Mayhem show, Corey Graves, been on the show several times. Um, he they were doing the pre-show, and he's like, he's at, he's down there with a camera crew, you know, while people were following. And it's like this is what it's like to come out at WrestleMania, and this is what it looks like, and everything, right? Um, and I'm like, wouldn't it be great? They really need to do a 360 camera down there. And I'm realizing I can't really show you this because the bandwidth is so intense that this is all I'm getting on on the feed. But they, there's several of these where they do go out, and this is actually, I, I know it's kind of a blurry mess right now, but if you if we had better bandwidth on this computer, uh, <laughs> it, uh, it, it's them walking out for the uh, Battle Royal. And this is at AT&T Stadium in front of 100,000 people. Wow. And you get to look around and look at the people. Um, if you're familiar with wrestling, the Undertaker's entrance from uh, from a Raw uh, sometime within the last couple of months is on here as well. Um, there is and actually and this and, and 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 they did the genius thing with this. There's a wrestler uh, named Tyler Breeze that he comes out with an iPhone on a selfie stick on a very fuzzy selfie stick, and they project his selfie camera to the screen. Hmm. As he's walking out. So they just had him come out with whatever this device was, whatever this camera was on, you know, holding it up on a stick like he usually does. And so nobody's really the wiser because it, he, he kind of came out like, well, they're showing something else on screen. And uh, and and he got that walkout. Um, so I, now I'm going to start looking for the camera when I'm watching Raw. <laughs> you know, I mean, they're, they're going to be smart. They're going to put, put in places that you're not going to see uh, much of it. But they've they've always been experimenting with things. There's been cameras on top of the posts, which I imagine are GoPros of some sort. Um, and they, there was a great picture of you know one of the wrestlers doing his swing move like in the middle of the ring, you know uh, that just came up I think yesterday. Uh, so they're really kind of um, 
and, and there's an entire playlist. If you look up the uh, on WWE's uh, YouTube page, um, there's just a giant playlist of all all these things. Um, so I, I recommend you checking it out. You know, I, again, they're kind of they're kind of you know getting ahead of technology. You know, I mean, they they are one of the notorious not notorious, but you know, you know, famous ones to do the over their own over the top network. Mm -hmm. And now you're kind of seeing a lot of people follow suit after they just reported about 1.8 or over 1 million subscribers and 1.8 million uh, viewers of WrestleMania this year. So um, I think uh, they're definitely one to watch here. I think this is the Undertaker entrance that I found here. Um, so uh, go check that out. I mean, it, it's interesting to see where people are, are, are kind of sticking these cameras and see what experiences you can get. Chelsea? So, so you were talking about the, the GoPro, and I I don't have a lot of GoPro experience. Mm -hmm. What? How do you frame in a GoPro shot? There's no I, you, you don't there. you no. don't yeah. you just kind of point in the general direction. We actually experimented with it mm -hmm. a couple weeks ago, Kitty. I know you. I, I didn't get to see too much of the footage, but we we tied it to the turnbuckle. Yeah, like like a kind of the the, the connector of the turnbuckle. And again, just pointing at the ring, and because and even oh, and, and and the Baja competition this weekend, every like every other car had a GoPro, and it was attached to the helmet or it was on the dash or something. And uh, I think one of the, I think the, the number wow. one endurance race one is going to actually kick us some of their footage uh, when I talk to them. So, I mean, no, you, it's, it's just that POV or that area and you get what you get and you kind of, I mean, there's a lot of bad footage you're going to have to wade through. You know what I mean? Yeah. I believe GoPro is developing, uh, don't quote me on this, but I believe GoPro is developing a 360 degree camera. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, so it's. Uh, I was actually listening to their interview today on, on Twitter on the NAB uh, live stream. And it's, it's, it's just, it, this is something that's already existed. Like these rigs where you can attach six GoPros. We've, we've, yeah. actually, we've actually been looking into this a little bit. Um, but they're now, they're going to have their own. And, and you can just buy a bunch of GoPros or get all of your friends' GoPros together as long as they're the Hero 4 Black Edition, apparently. Okay. Um, which is an interesting kind of catch for that. Mm -hmm. The rig is $1,500, but it includes a license to their proprietary stitching software. Okay. And that's the big question mark when I was looking at those other rigs. So, and, and they have like kind of a jump camp, there's the jump camp stuff and they have another kind of version of that camera that like they have one that will do like the 16 cameras in a circle mm -hmm. kind of thing, which is ungodly expensive in the long run. Um, but uh, it's, I think for like five grand, you'll have a GoPro rig. That would yeah. be pretty decent. Mm -hmm. I think um, also, I mean, 360 degree cameras, they are dropping down in price. Mm -hmm. um, and so I believe... Probably in like two to three years, you'll be able to find one for like 400 or 500. Well, there's the Rico Theta mm -hmm. right now. Videos, eh, but uh, pictures are pretty decent. With yeah. It. And I know that's like the flip cam of 360 video right now, yeah. it seems. Yeah. So, you know, or I'm the, go ahead. I'm, I'm trying to decide if I want to pick up the Moto or not the Moto, the Samsung Galaxy, the 360, mm -hmm. or do I want to pick up? the mevo mm -hmm. which does the it doesn't do 360 but it does like a nice post edit capability from a mobile device with 4k video and stereo well, sound and i'm not sure about the post edit i think it's mostly live is the intention when we talk to is that so it, it, it is mostly live but from what i was reading mm -hmm. on their site there is the there is capability, capability to post okay. it that's the one that was well, the one we we talked to the co-founder livestream.com mm -hmm. on the show about. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that, that, that it's it, and a lot of interest from people when we put those videos up too. Um, so uh, yeah, they're they're finally getting out and they're they're finally getting in the hands of like I know when Gadget was talking about it and everything. So, and again, it's that kind of it's not even prosumer; it's more high consumer at that point. You know, mm -hmm. you know, somebody starting to do something like what we do here you know it's a good it's a good entry point for something like that so or 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 chilla as you are you know uh your kid goes to plays and recitals or whatnot you know that you know you, you can take that video and then always pick him out of, pick him out of the crowd mm -hmm. you know so uh well, that's where i think so so that's where i was reading about it that it can be put in a disconnected state which mm -hmm. is why I was interested. I'm interested in using it for work. Right. 
uh, SD card. It, it will just record to an SD card, and, yeah. and then you can snag it. Yeah. So mm-hmm. you're right. There is there is some post edit capability there. So, um, and for those that, those that don't know, and we again look up uh, the MOV, uh, MOVI uh, from live stream. Uh, we, we talked about it a couple of times on here, including that interview with, uh, Max Hote of live stream. Um, on awesome chat, but, um, are we talking about the same one? Cause I'm talking about the M E V O M E V O the one where the one where like you can live stream and you pull up an iPhone and like it, it selects the shots. Yes. 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 That's M E V O M E V O. That was the one with the live get, Facebook video. Get, yeah. And if you go to getmevo.com, G E T M E V O, mm-hmm. you can pre order today and save a hundred bucks. Yes. Hmm. Yes. Uh, should be Which coming. At the, at the, at the two ninety nine right. price point, it kind of makes me say, hmm. Because mm-hmm. yeah. here's where I need it. I need it to put it on a table and to do an interview. Mm-hmm. Right. And, okay. and maybe do, if I have a panel of three people or whatnot, I feel like this is like the perfect use case for this and that's where i'd like to 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 really play around with the device i think certainly i think it's definitely a possibility for something like that a nice you know kind of package solution so all right you know what's nice package solution right over on katie's lap (laughs) pizza desk pizza desk desk. pizza desk courtesy of slice on broadway <laughs> our good friends supporting uh pittsburgh <laughs> podcasting with go. the finest pepperoni pizza now at pnc park the home of the pittsburgh pirates uh thank you so much to them feeding our guests here in studio uh, we, we kind of rolled in that's why we're keeping it warm under the laptop right now uh so we'll have our our, our we'll eat the pizza desk later um <laughs> then katie won't have a pizza desk on her lap could um uh, no. could we talk to slice about making customized cases for my laptop that's just <laughs> just the, like for pizza storage um yeah. um capabilities yeah, it's, it's a feature <gasps> oh you like a little little triangle shape on top of my laptop there you go <laughs> like, so they gotta work with uh in case <gasps> oh <laughs> Like a pizza box. People yeah. would be like, you have a pizza box. They don't realize it's a laptop. <laughs> you know, you know, if they get the 3D printer technology to the right point and we can 3D print food, mm-hmm. I can finally fax Bobby that slice of pizza mm. that he's been asking me to for since we've been having slice on board. Funny with thing us. you say that. <laughs> oh no we got the guy to ask can you partner with slice on broadway <laughs> well no i mean they are 3d printing pizzas i believe nasa is experimenting with it uh because you gotta make sure space. you deliver yeah. to the space station they're mm-hmm. up there for a while they gotta get that pizza for the big game well and that's like that's the only way that they can really get pizzas through 3d printing mm-hmm. there's no dominoes in <laughs> yeah. space ladies and gentlemen whoa mind blown no dominoes <laughs> <laughs> but uh you know like they send the pizza emoji and they don't get the pizza it yeah it doesn't work it i doesn't mean work. uh at peacemaker also we we actually have a chocolate extruder at our offices um please it's give not... that please give that reaction <laughs> i just had <laughs> it's just something fun that we do right now uh we're not currently offering it but hope maybe in the future uh, but it is fun to play around with, especially like take STL models like a Fuego the Dragon and print them out in chocolate. <laughs> call, it, call that a 10% project, right? Yeah. 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 A little R&D work. <laughs> yeah. <exactly. laughs> Yummy R&D work. I screwed this one up. Let's say on Broadway. Check out our friends. Thank you so melt, much right. to them. They're here up in the, uh, well, there, there are no tracks in Broadway right now in front yeah. of their place. I noticed driving by today, uh, but they're up here on Broadway. Uh, no, in on Broadway in Beachview, and uh, you know of course Main Street down in Carnegie, PA, and the new location at PNC Park. I've been getting a lot of reports from people checking it out at the at the Pirates game. So uh, really cool to hear that. So thank you them for supporting the show. Check them out sliceonbroadway dot com. Let them know that the awesome cast sent you. Okay, we have a few items here. First of all, Katie, you have an app of the week. Yes. His name is Steve. Steve. Steve the Jumping Dinosaur. <laughs> <laughs> and he may look familiar to some of you guys out there that may yes. run Chrome. Yes. Tell is... me about this. Um, I have. I, I sent you the one yeah, that you had the, the better picture on it. Um, but Steve is the little jumping dinosaur you probably saw on Chrome. And the coolest thing about Steve is 
you know, I don't feel like looking up my game on my phone. I'll just pull down my notifications and look at Steve. He plays right there. Steve is in your notifications. You can even adjust the sound on and off in your notifications. And so now I will not ignore you for the rest of the time as I play with Steve jumping cactuses. Do, do, what do you search? Just Steve the dinosaur? No, no, Steve. Steve the jumping dinosaur. Uh, yeah, he jumped up uh, real high. He was yeah, like one of the yeah. top 10 I, downloaded. I, tops, I typed Steve and he came up. Yes. So, yep. And he's downloading. <laughs> yeah, it's been downloaded over four hundred thousand times. That's amazing. I didn't oh, know. I, I didn't know you could get that kind of functionality right there in the notification page. He's number fifteen in overall games. And you said this is a coding project. Yeah, some uh, twenty-two-year-old guy Don't. said, "I want to play with coding on the weekends." <laughs> and here Dick you Cabo. go. Yep. And so then you have Steve. And Steve was born. Yeah, founder Ivan de Cabo, who currently works as an iOS junior software developer in Spain. Wow. <laughs> so go download Steve. Check it out before, I don't know. Now Google wouldn't, Google wouldn't have him take it down, right? Oh. Or anything? I mean, I'm sure I'm sure everybody everybody at Google is playing this right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so go, 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 go check out Steve the uh, Jumping Dinosaur. Uh, we got we had a tweet. Uh, Dolo John was actually asking about this, and I was I was kind of slow to catch up on on this news uh, uh, with my travel this last week. Um, apparently, if you're running Windows, uninstall QuickTime. Um, the story is this is a lesson awesome, but I, I figured we should we should kind of throw this PSA out here. Um, so apparently, Apple decided to um, stop updating QuickTime um, for Windows, at least, uh, back in January. And since, um, to the point where the Homeland Security Department has said it's a bad idea to have QuickTime for Windows on your computer. Oh, wow. Um, there are at least two zero-day exploits that leave you vulnerable. I don't know the extent of, other than that. Uh, but if you are running Windows and you do have QuickTime. Now, this is a pain because some applications require QuickTime. Yeah. For, for, especially if you work with video or have some kind some multimedia applications um, to the point where I was listening to the, the new screensavers and uh, uh, Father uh, Robert Boster on there was saying that, yeah, I have this application, so I uninstall it, and then I have to reinstall it when I want to use the application and uninstall it again, um, like, to yeah. function. It's, 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 what? <laughs> Um, and, and it is just kind of disappointing because, like, you know, you know, Apple is the big security company that just fought the government, um, or at least tried to, and uh, and uh, and 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 they let this go, you know, and and aren't touching it, and didn't say, hey, we're not doing this anymore. Like, I all all these Windows XP machines have QuickTime and some func fun function on them. If you have iTunes, chances are you have QuickTime on your Windows computer. Because they were bundling it for the longest time, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I'm still getting updates that tells me to update my my QuickTime to that last version on on a surveillance uh, Windows 10 machine that I have downstairs, upstairs. I don't I forgot where I'm at in the house. Um, you know, and I don't know. It's just one of those things uh, that's kind of weird. So so make sure you get that installed. Make sure you're 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 safe out there, guys. So I'm really I'm really surprised on this one that that they're not writing a removal into an iTunes update. Because to your point, it, came, it usually came down with iTunes. Mm -hmm. I'm surprised that we're not going to, and maybe we just haven't seen it yet. I'm surprised that they're not pushing a removal and giving you a prompt that says, click now if you don't want to remove this. Because I, I do agree there are right. a lot of applications that require QuickTime. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what, what are they going to do, turn you over to VLC? Um, <laughs> but, oh man, how much rewriting are they going to have to do in that in that case? So, I, yeah, I, don't, I, I, I bet you we see something about it. Mm -hmm. It'll be interesting to see. All right, I uh, hear some some uh, some happier news. I was actually tweeting with uh, uh, Miss Sinbin. I, I can't remember which is her name and which is her actual Twitter. I think that's her Twitter. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's her real name. Well, no, 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 because because <laughs> like her like display name is like Doctor Sinbin, I think, mm -hmm. if I mm -hmm. have the right oh, okay. one. Uh, but but I want to give her a shout out because uh, we were talking about this on Twitter the other day, um, and I got a kick out of it. Um, so I don't know, you know, okay, yeah, there's a presidential race that I'm not going to get into here on the show in general. Um, although we might be earmarked to do a political discussion um, um, sometime in the near future around technology. Uh, but the Canadian Prime Minister schools a journalist in how quantum computing works. 
So apparently, a they were they were they were uh, talking about giving money to some institution, talking about quantum computing and everything, right? And, and I, I'll be honest, I didn't know much about quantum computing going into this, right? Yeah. And apparently, some journalist thought he was going to be cute. He was like, "Well, I was going to ask you how quantum computing works, but here's a real question." Blah 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 blah. He's like, "Guys, like, hold on a second, you're going to learn something right now." And for about a minute, minute and a half, he gives you the gist of what quantum computing is about. The prime minister, the basic equivalent of a president in the United States. So imagine, actually, I could probably imagine this, like, like Barack Obama saying, listen, this is quantum computing, you know, and, and you're going to learn something right now, you know, and just completely doing it. Um, and then think about any of the candidates and see if they could do the same thing. Um, I'd love that. I, I hope some of them have been asked the same question here in this last couple of days. Um, but the video is up there. Go find it. Just look for Canadian prime minister, um, um, quantum computing. You'll find it. It's wonderful i wish he was our president um just based on this uh i i, I know uh completely educated uh, uh guest there but um um no that, that's cool and and again and and quantum computing i i i'll, I'll, I'll it's beyond me um, yeah. how, how this works so but but still like awesome that is a geek up here you know that you know uh, kind of representing them the, so. the only thing that i heard about quantum computing um was that it's going to pose a little bit of security issues Mm -hmm. And when it does come out. So well, that's all that I know about that. So what I picked up from it is computing right now is ones and zeros on mm -hmm. and off. That's it. That's how we do data. Right. And right. apparently help me here. Somebody's going to like somebody out there knows listening, knows quantum computing. I know. And it will completely tell me. Um, but basically one bit is not an on and off. There's multiple theoretical states it can be in. All right. And which means, which kind of exponentially multiplies your bandwidth. Yeah. And so what I've heard, too, uh, at least with security, is that it's like uh, if you had the capability to, in an instant, take a master lock and find all the combinations before it just opens, like, instantly. Mm -hmm. So... It'd be interesting. Yeah. It'd be interesting. Definitely. It, it, it could be interesting. Okay. Okay. Um, and from there, geez, so we got a lot of stories in here. I want to make sure we get to some of you guys. Um, Chilla, Chilla, what, what do you have here? And then I imagine this other one is Katie's that we'll get to in a moment here. Mm -hmm. The Wallhaven wallpaper. Yeah. What's going on here? So, so uh, there was, there was a website a while back <clears throat> that was called like wallhaven.cc okay. and they did, they, they were like the prime provider for everything wallpaper related. They had a really good search engine. Um, and they had a really good just UI for, for leveraging and finding wallpaper for your devices. Mm -hmm. Um, I heard that one of the developers like went into hiding. He just went off the grid. Um, and they actually had to start back over from scratch, hmm. rebuilding the entire Wallhaven um, hmm. site. Um, and with that being said, they've just finally gone through, I think, like their alpha and beta processes. And in the process, they actually created a Windows 10 um, app that's in the App Store. Um, so pretty cool. I'm a huge fan of their their site, even if it's just to go through and look at random wallpapers and, and just, I almost wish I could set their site as like a, a background rotating wallpaper type thing. Um, search is good. You can search by um, resolution size, things of that nature. Awesome. They do have like a, a, I think they call it sketchy, which is kind of their uh, questionable content uh, section. <laughs> you, can, <laughs> you can kind of filter based on all kinds of stuff. Um, but I, Again, check it out. It's out on the Windows Store if you're running Windows 10, um, and it's a universal app, so I think you can also pick it up for mobile devices. But it's a, it's a great find for me. I love I, I loved visiting their website, and now it's it's right in a nice little app. Nice, nice. Go check it out. All right, Katie. Yep. This moment that you've been waiting for talking about. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's happening in the world of VR porn. I'm yep. gonna have something to say about it now. We like we need to turn this into a segment yeah. for you here. 
Oh, geez, I just read the headline. <laughs> yeah, it's, you know, if you're looking for VR porn, the place to go is Vegas now. Okay, okay, um, all right, not the internet? <laughs> no, no, this, no, you want, you want the full experience, you're going to Vegas now. Okay, okay, that's the de facto experience, not, not, <laughs> I just, not just like with a cardboard um and just being sad um <laughs> no so um they partnered um vr bangers which i love by the way what was the other one boink vr yeah that we, we were talking about yes vr bangers and headset maker aura vision visor sorry are teaming up to offer in-room adult experiences at hotels on the strip in las vegas it's kind of like an augmented room. by the way by the way no pictures no demonstration just a picture of las vegas in this article <laughs> Yeah, that, all of them are like that. You it's can't amazing. illustrate on this on this case. Um, you simply pay twenty bucks on mm-hmm. your credit card. Uh, you have a visor set, uh, or a visor sent to your hotel room. Uh, it's preloaded with sexy time content. I love this article here. <laughs> that's how, that's how they you, say. Know, you know, the person though delivering that visor is like, oh, something's about to go down. <laughs> oh, I can't imagine how uh, gross that thing is. <laughs> this guy is not about to partake in snoopavision. <laughs> yeah, so you get up there, and all you got to pick is the gender of your uh, your virtual partner. And the way they've done it is it looks like they you're in the hotel room that you're in. So it's customized that you would have the kind of set. It sounds like it was a story like the guy or girl shows up like a, um, you know, how they do. <laughs> <laughs> and then things start to happen. And um, yeah, so it's it's kind of it's lifelike, realistic. Um, yeah. <laughs> and, and it's it's their own. <laughs> Wait, the, 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 is it their own headset? No, they they Indiegogo their own headsets in the past, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, correct. Mm-hmm. All right, Our I'm website. checking these. I'm checking these websites <laughs> before I get into it. <laughs> but it's it's your 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 phone. Um, so yeah, you're in control of what's you know the actual. All right, all right. I think I'm okay to show this website. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Some int- so there's some visual representation for you, and there's also a YouTube. So I know it's going to be safe of reaction videos. Um, on the floor of a con uh, to 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 the virtual reality porn. Um, this could be interesting. It, this could be the equivalent of that one. Have you seen the one where where they they were doing haunted scenes and the one girl was just crawled up in a ball on the floor, yeah, yeah. like with a vibe or something? Um, so, yeah. So, I, my my question is, why do they have to preload the content in today's day and age? Can't they stream it and let you select? Have you tried hotel Wi-Fi lately? <laughs> yeah. like have you tried streaming porn on wi <laughs> but yeah that's uh well there you go yeah. tech, what industry is going to take on a technology you know more than porn well, uh, it does make sense though because mm-hmm. most of most of their profit does come from hotels mm-hmm. right now mm-hmm. so i mean it only makes sense to kick it up a step further that is the thing that is still there i don't know how they do on movies and everything else but you will always like oh but here's the porn you know yeah. uh, when it when it comes to the business traveling stuff that's why there's the gentleman's clubs right along the highway mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. uh the the billboards and everything i i saw them along the main strip there there in tennessee mm-hmm. you know um i think i think the one place was called the love shack mm-hmm. for instance <laughs> Um, but, but I mean, that's, that's the audience, right? Is, mm-hmm. is, is, is those lonely travelers. Oh, this is, I, I love this because this is going to accelerate VR technology so fast because when it gets into the, the you know, as soon as porn, well, as, as long as porn has been part of technology, it just kind of pushes, propels things forward. Right, 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 right. right. And it's going to get more and more realistic because we're going to need more and more realistic porn. And then I would say there's. Where did I see this? This this is getting passed around Facebook or something. There's actually a video that looks like it's the full experience, and the guy's like in this jumpsuit with just attachments, and it's interesting, um, and awkward, and and scroll by, just scroll by. Yeah. Um, but is a little, okay. It was a technology. I, I'm I'm gonna I'm about to ask an awkward question. I don't know if you if you're cool with answering this, but is 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 3D printing been taken on in this industry i mean you you're up on the news well, yeah. I, um not that i know of i know that it's been thought of before mm-hmm. um i don't know of a company that would use 3d scanning technologies and uh 3d printing in unison. Mm-hmm. so uh, it can be done though um yeah <laughs> 
and he'll be the first one to let us know, just like announcements with Peacemaker Technologies uh, <laughs> over here at the Awesome Cast, so we can talk about it. So we appreciate that. Oh my gosh, my brain is just like. <laughs> well, I mean, you could do so much with it, but yeah, yeah, I, yeah. With a 3D scanner and a 3D printer, it's pretty much limitless. I'll just get to say that. And silicon or silicone uh, material. Mm-hmm. Well, okay. If you're printing ears, think about what the what else you can <laughs> <laughs> And button. All right. Now, now we've uh, made another uh, first-time guest blush on this show. Yep. Um, I think it's the only reason you bring me here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Let's see what she can do to this guy. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. we got to get you paired up with Marta. Marta and, 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 and uh, John Carmen. Uh, was was fantastic and 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 uh, throw throw daughters in the mix and I'm sure we will never be able to post that episode. <laughs> um, so, uh, all right. Well, hey. Uh, so, what's coming up that you're allowed to tell us about with Peacemaker Peacemaker Technologies? So, so we do have a lot of announcements that um, we can talk about being. Uh, metal 3D printing is coming. And not in the way that the stuff we were just talking about nope. can't be talked about. Nope, nope. So. Uh, this, it, it's, it'll be more in terms of customizable jewelry and other accessories. Um, and so that'll be off-site, but it's more for an uh, older uh, crowd. Okay. Um, but the, And then we are going to be at the Pittsburgh Zoo uh, April 30th, or the weekend of, the, of April 30th. So and I believe we'll be up... Um, I believe we'll be up by the islands. Don't quote me on that. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Uh, Katie, scarehouse.com. Check out her videos talking about poop. Yep. Poop. Crap. <laughs> 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 Subscribe to the Scarehouse podcast on uh, Why uh, Google. people talk to me? <laughs> <laughs> I just have moments where I'm like, what, what, what is, what, what is this interest in here? <laughs> yeah, I, I talked about poop and crap, but yeah, uh, Scarehouse, uh, the website's getting a revamp, so that's gonna be fun and exciting. Um, we're looking over that. That's so weird to think about that it's uh, April and we're totally getting on. You know, I think tickets will be on sale here really soon. There you go. There you Excited. go. It's fun stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, John Chachilla. At Chilla on the Twitters. Did I miss talking about your thing again? You missed it again. Are you, was it in there? It was right. I said, make sure you, underneath the picture, there's the link to put in my tagline underneath yep. my Oh, name. you just need to yell wah, at me more. Wah, wah. This this news that we will. Oh, so, so go check out ChillaTech.net. Yay, we're talking about it. L-L-A-T-E-C-H dot net. Um, sooner or later, Sorg will get it underneath my name captioned along with my Twitter feed. But uh, I started working on it when, when I got the new iPad and I, I re- picked up the Pro um, with the pencil and the keyboard. Um, I got to say, it's pretty awesome, even for just a blogging type device. Mm-hmm. Um, so that being said, um, mm-hmm. I fired up a WordPress site and started throwing some stuff out there. And I will be probably posting at a minimum once a week following the my awesome thing of the week on this. So I'll be covering that in case case that I talked about and then linking back to that time code in YouTube so other people can watch the review. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I'll probably try to post uh, probably once or twice additional a month and, and be above and beyond the awesome thing. So, so, so I, I see your post of how I work. Is this is this your this is in your desk, right? Like this is a... so that's the park. That's the PNC All park right. up on the twenty eighth floor. Yeah. So there you go, and in that fancy new building uh, uh, in the middle of Pittsburgh. Uh, yeah. That's that's if you get if you get to watch PB if you watch PBS and and whatnot. There's a back to downtown. I saw um, the ask for that. that building is actually front and center a large part of it. Nice, nice. So go check that out and check out chillatech.net. We'll get that in there. Um, and that's everybody. He's on the other show. I was about to introduce the other person sitting in here. Um, but that's for the show after this. Um, I mean, hi, Bert Legrand. Hi, Lord. Hi. Uh, that's for uh, find out more about that voice at WrestlingMayhemShow.com this week or stay on the stream if you're with us live. Uh, but oh, thank you, everybody. AwesomeCast.net. Subscribe to the show. Google Play. Look for that Google Play stuff. I should probably link that on the website now that I think about it. We're going to do a pass for that. Um, and uh, 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 please uh, follow us at AwesomeCast on the Twitter, the Facebook group, 
and uh, the Facebook page as well. We're, we're posting the videos on Facebook as well, so you can actually watch it on there if you'd like to, uh, if you're into the Facebook video stuff. And, um, and of course, you can join us here live every Tuesday night at live.sorgatronmedia.com around 6.30 p.m. Eastern or so. We will kick off with the stream. You can join these crazy yahoos in the chat room that have been... Uh, uh, rolling with it all night along, like Alex from California, Missy, who's doing uh, the show notes upstairs, and who else is there? Anybody else in there? Chilla hangs out in there. Juggalo John on there as well, and uh, somebody named Claudia in Virginia, whoever they may be tonight. Oh, and hi, Aiden from San Antonio. <laughs> what's, what's that? What's that? Mystery people. Mystery people. Uh, but thank you so much to our awesome chat room. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.